Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I'm going to uh, put the primer on the boat. And one of the little secrets that most people don't talk about when they're building their boats. Thanks for joining me. And this is James. James's boat build. So these are the products that I, um, I'm going to use on uh, the uh, to, to, to put the primer on the boat. And... Um, I'm not sponsored by Total Boat, but I have to use their products in the past, and um, I've had good luck, so why not go with it? Um, I don't particularly care if you went this route or not. It's not for me to say, but it's worked for me, and I, I think that they're a good quality product. I've used it on uh, two of my boats. So um, first is uh, this uh, de-waxer and surface prep. After I uh, clean up the uh, the whole boat um, and get all the dust off, we're going to go over it real good to make sure I get any contaminants off. And you wipe the, the boat down with that. And then uh, we use the uh, Total Protect. It's a two-part uh, epoxy primer in uh, barrier coat. It's a three-to-one mix ratio. And uh, it's excellent performance on uh, underwater. Um, you know, above and below the, uh, the uh, water line. Um, basically, you get a gallon here, and um, you mix as uh, needed. So to make this a full gallon, the rest of it's in here, the, uh, the curing agent. So you'll pour this into the uh, base. Um, let's say you start off with a quart, mix it up, let it sit for some time. I think it's 20 minutes or so. And... Um, this stuff is extremely thick, and what I like to do especially, they recommend um, this uh, thinner to um, get that um, uh, primer to uh, cover more evenly. I think it's a, a good investment to, to, uh, to use it. And uh, that's how I'm going to get the primer on the boat. You need at least two minimum coats of this Barrier Protect. I have another kit. So I have two gallons to cover my whole boat. And uh, that's what I'm going to use. And now moving on to the boat, I have my screen up and um, I wanted to, uh, wanted to show you the boat and how it's came, come along. I, um, I still, believe it or not, have to go over it with one more sanding. Uh, this will be like a final light sanding, It'll probably take me an hour, and um, that way I can make sure that, that I never didn't miss any spots or anything that might need it to be addressed. Um, this took quite some time to put on, this chine rail, but as you can see, I think it came out quite well. Um, I, I think, uh, okay, it is a half inch. So basically, I added an inch more width to the bottom, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, especially an inch. It's, it's not that much. But, as you can see, and I'll bring it up a little bit higher. It does look uh, symmetrical, and I'm quite happy with it. it. It came out well. But let me tell you, there was a lot of work involved, especially putting the uh, fillet in, which is I have a nice round fillet, and um, that that still needs to be sanded, just look, I can see that right now, right over here. But um, anyway, um, I got two, um, two layers of fiberglass six ounce cloth on there to protect the wood. The wood, as you remember, is only, uh, it was two layers of quarter, or yeah, quarter inch um, uh, Morani ply. And that's what I used. So uh, we're going to give you a quick walk around of the, uh, the boat and how it looks. And uh, that's basically it. The, uh, the back got the uh, heavier cloth and I had to cut in pieces. I had leftover pieces which I used it completely. It worked out really good. But I ended up with this seam that needed to be addressed. But it's It'll be flawless. Uh, it won't even show, um, you know, when I put the primer and obviously the paint off. This is my uh, so my sunscreen that I use, you know. Um, 
Hey, you know, just to get off subject again, you see that screen? That thing is like one of the best things I ever bought, man. Like you can't even see inside because it's white. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it gives me privacy when I, when I want to do stuff in the, uh, the garage. But anyway, I got the screen down and I just wanted to show you about that. I'm building some uh, blocks here. And uh, this is going to use because I'm going to jack up the boat. And I got to redo the, um, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the jig, the rolling jig that I use to make the boat. Right now, it's the same jig I use to set up all the frames. And um, it's, uh, it's not needed anymore. I just need to get the, the boat in and out. And I need the wood that's on there to, um, to make the new uh, support uh, structure. So when I flip it over... I'll have uh, that structure made up and it's obviously got to fit the bottom of the boat um, again too um, I got a little bit of height there which I want to get it down because the the whole essence of what I'm gonna do to this boat to flip it over is I'm gonna lower it right you know uh, with the uh, the jig being lower make up a new jig have uh, the new jig on top of the boat with the wheels and then I'm going to use a gin pole to, uh, to hoist up one side of the boat and then just roll it over. Now, it'll be quite the uh, operation. I, I'm sure you've probably seen some people do it on uh, YouTube videos, but it's going to be interesting how I do it. So um, I did also, too, want to show you. Um, I wanted to tell you about... Um, uh, the cost involved, that's the other little thing that I was uh, uh, going to tell you on this episode. Um, so at this time, I probably have, um, I didn't look exactly what it was, but uh, slightly over $7,000 involved into this project. Um, that beating with uh, the premium wood, the, uh, the uh, Moranti ply, uh, the uh, West system, the total bolt correct, everything's marine grade. I didn't uh, skimp on any of the uh, materials used in the building of this boat. It doesn't mean that you have to build your boat uh, that way. I mean, you could use lesser materials and work out just fine. It's just that me, for my build, I wanted to use the best uh, material that I could get available to me. Um, and there's one little thing that um, people don't ever talk about in their boat builds, and it's the cost. And the reason why I know exactly uh, the dollar amount for uh, the, uh, the, the boat that I've, I've, I'm working on is when I go to insure it, and I go through Boat US, uh, it's a, they're a major national company that insures boats and gives you, along with your insurance, uh, boat towing protection. Um, they want to know, because it's a home-built boat, um, what its cost is. And you have to preserve and electronically save all your receipts. Now, every receipt that I've uh, taken and photographed, uh, this I have an app. I forget what it's called, but I'll take a picture of the receipt. It categorizes it and lets me know the running total of my project. I want to say it's exactly like seven thousand two hundred dollars at this point, and um, so w with uh, with me knowing that, and when I submit and the boat is when the boat is uh, you know ready to uh, be put in the water, I want it to be insured, and um, that way the first thing I wanted to know is what's the cost of the um, the boat, so I could show them all the receipts and to the state of Florida my home state where I'm registering the boat, they want to know if I paid the taxes on it. So obviously, if I come up with all of those receipts, they know, okay, you you know, obviously pay the tax on it. So I don't have to pay this humongous tax bill when I go to register it. Um, that's what the fishing game is going to want to do to see this boat. They basically want to see the boat and what you did. And, um, you know, they want to see your receipts. So it's really crucial that you do save your receipts in a project like this. That way you can prove to the insurance company how much you spent on the boat. And um, you can prove to the state that you do pay your taxes. 
And that little app is, is tremendous. I, I'll get it to you next time, or I'll make a note of it on the, uh, in the below uh, uh, column uh, of this video. That way it'll help you out if you're interested. I'm not a sponsor of that app, but it, it certainly worked out good for me. So, and it was cheap, it was, it was really cheap. And, uh, but anyway, going back to the expenses, not only do I, um, you know, put things down like this stuff, the, uh, the paint and the fiberglass and the resin and the wood and the screws and the nails and so forth and so on. Also too, like tools that I ended up buying like um, I bought this uh, uh, sanding, you know, oscillating sander, and that's part of the build. Um, I bought a nice little uh, sander from uh, Makita. It's a little finger sander, and uh, that's part of the build. And you know, anything that I've um, that I've used my um, my little suit that I wear, even though it's disposable. Sandpaper, um, glues, um, anything. Anything I've used to help me build that, whether it was a tool or materials or, or just a piece of sanding paper, I, uh, I put down as the cost of the boat. And you say, wow, that, that's really being nitpicky. Um, what's really gonna blow your mind is when you go to um, insure the boat, uh, and let's say I come up with the value of, um, let's say this whole project, the engine, a new trailer, everything. I got between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars into this project. Let's just say for a round figure. Hopefully, it's not going to be that much. But um, and the major cost is going to be the engine. I'll be dropping probably fifteen thousand on the engine, a brand new two hundred Suzuki. But um, uh, They'll, you know, they're all saying, okay, so you have receipts totaling up, um, you know, um, $25,000. Well, it's like, well, wait a minute, that doesn't include my labor. They don't care. It's a home-built boat. It's like, well, you could see this boat is worth, you know, probably $85,000. And um, they'd be like, they don't care. Um, the, you're a home-built guy. They'll only pay you for your expenses used in building the boat. And that's the little secret that no one ever tells you about if you ever want to insure the boat. And I don't know why you wouldn't want to insure the boat because it's, uh, it's cheap. It's like 200 bucks for the year. It's here in Florida, it's like, why wouldn't you? And it includes towing. So anyway, um, that's where we're at. That's my project. And um, I thank you for um, joining me in my little uh, video blog here about my uh, boat build. I won't be probably putting out as many videos as I have in the past because, let's face it, there's not really that much progress. I mean, you know, if you want to sit there and me record uh, the paint and you can watch it dry, but the <laughs> I can't believe I said that. But you know what I mean. If there's something really exciting, I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to uh, have it for you guys. I'm not forgetting you. I mean, God strike me dead if I'm not going to post this uh, whole video blog all the way into the water. I mean, we're going to see the rigging, how I rigged it out, how I flipped the boat over, how I painted it, all those things, guys. Just subscribe and, and come along with me. I mean, what else is there to do? You know what I mean? <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and y'all be good. And this is James, and have a good day.